Welcome to Grit and Gravitas with Anne and Annie, bringing you savvy, spirited stories of success. We're excited to deliver 30 minutes of inspiration, impact, and goodness. We'll be bringing you guests and friends from around the country who have very special work and personal journeys. I'm Ann Dieter Gallagher, your co-host with Annie Carnathan, and this is Grit and Gravitas. Let's go. It is always a good day to be in the Grit and Gravitas studio in person again. Not that you and I, Annie, are always in person, but we uh, the last four episodes, I believe, we've had a remote uh, slate of guests, which have been phenomenal. All phenomenal, but there is nothing like a person. There's a chemistry it, to, the, to an in-person guest and a conversation and a sense of community, and no better guest... To join us today, when I'm talking about a sense of community and women rocking uh, radio and having a microphone, Holly Love, we are so honored to have you join us at Grit and Gravitas. Nobody told me about the cameras. I'm on the radio, <laughs> ladies. Stop. Hi, friends. Thank you so much. But Thank she's you. so Thank cute. You. It she really is cute. Matter. She, she is just, cute. Yeah, you, you can feel that no matter whether you're I listening I would have dressed looking. the same if I knew about the cameras. That was <laughs> the one thing that I learned in COVID. Is I, I like adopted my style. Like the oh, there you go. Of going in yeah. and being all fancy schmancy. I, I don't need to do that anymore. So, Holly, I kind of feel a little nervous because you have 30 years of experience in the radio industry and media and Annie and I we're usually behind the camera people but now we've just crested over a year of our podcasting foray and so we're trying to learn as much as you do but we're honored to have such an esteemed uh, wealth of experience in our studio today Thank you. I don't know. Wealth is the yeah. word. But, uh, you know it what, is. You know what? Experience. Hands-on experience. Yes. So yes. I guess that equates to wealth. But I think your podcast is wonderful. I've listened. I know that we've talked about it before. I was one of the first people yes. that texted Annie like, I love this. <laughs> but you know, it, it is, it is um, just enlightening to hear women um, talking about women and success stories. Right. And I've always looked to both of you as major success stories. So I'm honored to be You're here. Sweet. Thank you. And so you are the current position, iHeart Media, which is a, a behemoth, but you are um, a morning show producer. You're a content creator. You're a promotions director. And you have your own podcast, the Holly Love podcast, podcast. And I'm still doing shifts on regular FM radio, <laughs> terrestrial FM awesome. radio. Yeah, it, it, that's, you know, again, since COVID, like things have happened and, and it's just, you know, it's a bummer when, you know, DJs leave or, yeah. you know, people that you've worked with forever. But then opportunities, iHeart, because it's a behemoth, has opened up great opportunity for the people that are there. Great. And like this past weekend, I was on in Cleveland. My wow. aunt hears me in Pittsburgh every weekend. Or I'm in Salt Lake City. You know, while I'm not there, I'm also one of those people that, you know, explores the market even from afar, though I've been to those markets. So I really try to stay focused on what's going on in the market, and I can just do it from the comfort of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Right. So. And I think that's where technology, Holly, is the main disruptor. And COVID really accelerated that. Yeah. And you're, you're a live co-host with two men on a regional powerhouse, mm -hmm. WHP, W Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You got it. And there is something to be said for that in person. For the chemistry. Oh, Oof. totally. Yeah. Totally. We never left. So while everybody else um, did their shows from home basements, and basements closets. and, you know, we, we had the opportunity, um, not me necessarily, and I can get to that in a second, but, um, you know, where other FM DJs were, it, it was just the ability was there for them to do it a lot right. easier than what I do. Um, because we are a live all the time station. I mean, I literally still punch a button to fi fire off Fox news in the morning. Wow. You know what I mean? I still turn on the radio station, bring it out of, you know, network. So there's like right, some right. glitches there that they, 
they said, you know, we could probably try to figure this out. And I was like, no, nah, I'll just come in. You know, I never wanted to, to work from home. I just, I didn't think it was for me. And then just coupled with the fact that AM radio is still very AM radio it was easier to come in. Good. Yeah, I think working from home turned into living at work for me. Yeah. And it's it's already relentless, you know, the 24-7 the cycle. And when you talk about live and in person, the majority of people would not understand that when you're doing Cleveland and when you're doing Salt Lake and when you're doing Pittsburgh that you're not there. Right. And when you talk about how that massive consolidation and acceleration of, of, let's be honest, eliminating positions positions 100% only allows the most consummate professionals to remain in, in broadcasting. And you're a broadcasting professional. So when people say to us as a media agency, well, who's listening to terrestrial radio? It's still the largest amount of adults in a week. It's still amazing to me, and we'll go to the WHP factor of it. So for, I I guess, like 21 years, I've technically been with iHeart. Wow. um, And about 16 of them on WHP, not full time. And Annie knew me back in the day when I was on FM 97. And then I transitioned over to Bob, and I did Kiss for a little while. while it was in existence, and I've done some other stations in the market. I still, to this day... If, if I'm going to be recognized, which I try not to be because obviously I'm on the radio and I don't like... <laughs> we brought you out on uh, camera. It's on camera, right? But if I'm going to be recognized, it is 100% for something I said on WHP is 580 it? or something we did on WHP 580. And it could be 16 years ago, a prize I gave away. You know, <laughs> it's simple, but that is such a listen to radio yeah. Simple, not easy. And it's impossible to tell someone how difficult it is to carry hours oh my spontaneously as a team yes there are some elements that are always going to happen sure you cannot absolutely articulate to someone what a masterful ability that is to have that chemistry to have that show every day you don't get to wake up going ah, I think I'm, ah, I'm just gonna look, take take a little like time off i'm just gonna sort of you know, right, right, right. The check in and not necessarily engage. And it brings me to the core thing that I think we need to talk about in regards to you for, for women, how, when you look back, not only that long, because no, radio is notorious for eating its young and throwing it out, yeah. right? The massive turnover, the massive group to group station to station for whatever reason, how have you been resilient enough to stay not only at the top of your game in broadcasting, you've added jobs, you've added stations, you have not just survived, but you thrived. I'm doing the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. you. And and, and women have to have to be resilient that there are the ebbs and the flows. And I think we can say we are, or we can demonstrate that you've been I think the easiest answer, and it might sound funny, but I I don't understand the word no. Like, I I guess my, if somebody asks me to do something, even if I'm pulling my hair out and going, oh, you've got to be kidding me, right? I'm I'm still going to say yes, or I'm going to say, let me figure out a better way to do this. So that, I think, has made me... And listen, I mean, you'll talk to anybody at work. Like, I probably am not an easy person to work with. Like, but I'm busy. Like, right. if it's going to be worth my while and, and and it has to be done, I'm going to say yes. And Ann and I talk about that, especially for my team or Ann's team. We're in the yes business. Yeah. Because if we're not saying yes, someone else is. Absolutely. And, and I feel the same way. Yeah. And and that and that resilience and, and what I want to put an, an emphasis on is that your story is one of of struggle, of change, of disruption. Yeah. And, and what I mean by that is you're a woman with a personal life, with outside interests, with hobbies, right? Mm-hmm. And that in and of itself... And a not, mother. Not just through COVID, right? And kids are so busy today. They go all over creation. Two it's, travel teams, four different sports. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, that's right? a whole nother, that's a whole nother job. 
Like I, I look at right. other women like that are just, you know, that are like just trying to juggle like three kids at home. I'm like, I don't know how you do that. Like, whoa, like I'm at my max with two, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but, but you would yeah. figure it out, right? You would say like, oh yes. Um, yeah, you just figure yes, it out. Yes. Or let me figure out, you just find that carve out that. So I think the easiest, also the easiest answer to being a woman, <clears throat> excuse me, in the broadcast industry is. Um, which I think things are changing to an extent. I mean, as we become more sensitive to this and, and recognize people's feelings a little bit better, I've also had the thickest skin of them all. Good for you. Uh, and, and if you're going to, good for you, if you're going to come at me, I know that sounds aggressive, but if you're going to challenge me, I'm going to challenge you right back. You, you, you know, I'm going to stand my ground because I have to, you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a woman in a very male dominated Work Good for well. you, and that's probably why you're you're still standing and going strong. But we talk about that, Holly, and whether we like it or not, the main bastion of the C-suite is still very, very male-dominated. I think about it every day of my life. Every and, day of my life. And part of it is to change the way male CEOs think about women in the C-suite because generally they're making a lot of the decisions. Right. And when you talk about thick skin, again, simple, not easy. I have had mentors through the years and I think, and if I may, but Miss Sandy Fenton, right? Oh, the travel. I, I, you have no idea how much I adore this woman. Great. But she has said to me, on numerous times about, you know, standing your ground. And we've had a deep conversation about just make it better for the next generation of yeah, women. Good. So I, I'll be fine. You know, I know I'm fine. I've had trials and tribulations. It, life's a roller coaster ride. I'm not done yet. You know, I've got plenty of more right. uphill battles. But whatever I'm doing now, let me make it better for the next woman that comes up. I'm only as good as the person that comes in after me and, right. and, and says they learned something from me. So I guess that's it. Now, I still want to get a C seat someday, but and I still would like, and I would still like to see women be equally paid. I it's it's not a right. thing. I mean, it's just not a thing. They can say it all they want, but and I'm not specifically saying my company. It's just in every company. It is what it is. You know. I think there's more power to to deal with that challenge um, by starting your own business. So when when a female uh, starts her own business, then you've just equalized everything. And your, your clients, you know, will work with you based on you. You set your prices, you set the company prices, you create the value that you're going to deliver. And then, you know, it, it's equal opportunity from then on in, inside a corporation. That's the biggest challenge is, you know, is it, is it the same position for the same pay, uh, depending on the same experience? And that's what you want to make sure, the equal opportunity and equal pay. And then as what as much as like we shout that, I also still stand by best candidate for the job. Totally. I do too. I and just, we've talked about that. Uh, yeah. And I and I do. Like I I just I know that there's sometimes less opportunity or look you, you, a boys club is a boys club. It's always going to be a boys club. But what I can do, I guess in my position, is try to make it better for the next generation. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it, it's it's always going to be a, a boys club in so far as the time I have left. But we're also raising boys. All oh, of us. Big time. Well, and we've succeeded to date in whatever environment. If it's a, a boys club, I just created my own club. You know, okay, you you can't I can't disrupt that that club. But to be honest, when I started my business in uh, 2000, you know, um, five of the six of my personal board of advisors were men and CEOs and willing to let me bend their ear and ask questions. They might have thought they were stupid questions. They didn't say they were. And I was coming in totally green in the art of doing business, not the skill set, but how do you do business in, in this environment? You know, what do I need to know? What do I need to know to close a deal? Because that was all new to me. I was closing deals for elementary school projects and things like that. I wasn't closing business deals. Um, but your willingness to be teachable, which I've, I've said this to both of you, is, is I think is never, ever going to be 
viewed by another woman as weakness, right. but as your strongest suit. Like if you are able to sit there and ask a question and ask for advice, whether that is a man or a woman that's your, you know, offering or that's offering that advice. I think, I think that's strong. And I think men sometimes, and I can't, I'm not one of these people that's man versus woman all the right, time, right. but I do see it all the time in, in particularly, you know, with the people that I work with, like men are just not going to ask for help. Right, because they right. see it as a, a you know, a, help or a, directions. <laughs> <laughs> or where's the remote? Right? Yeah, <laughs> what's for dinner? <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sitting on the remote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, my sock is in the laundry. Okay, gotcha. Um, but as far as my son goes, you know, I'm, I'm his biggest cheerleader. You know, and in the same same breath, I'm his, you know, officer of the right. court. You know, right. Like I'm gonna be good, good cop, bad cop every day of the week with him until until we're both dead, you know. <laughs> so and and I think style has a lot to do with how you interact with men. And so when Ann and I are walking through iHeart to to promote our podcast, graciously thank you on on all the shows yes, on iHeart. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you know, you. it's not lost on us that you're the only female we see. It that is. That is a weird reality. That's a surreal moment when that when I when I recognize right, right, that. Right. Um, that being said, the people that I work with on the first floor they're my brothers. You know what I mean? They they are my. Well, bro- I do. There's a sense of family there, no yes. matter what stage and, and, and survival. That. Yeah. And, and so w- yeah. when when women are looking out and say not not you know great resignation aside, I'm still not entirely sure I understand that, but. But when you look out and, hmm, is this just, what's going to happen here, right? And, and you have a lot of responsibility. Mm-hmm. You have an enormous amount on you, you know, as a breadwinner, as your kid's mom, you know, as, as Holly Love, the consummate broadcast professional. As a friend. And when you look out at now you're, you're adding all these responsibilities to remain relevant. You know, in a company that keeps going, hmm, how do we? It's tricky. It's right? terrifying. And in those tough moments, could be, could how be do my you, number. women, right, resilience, how do you stay the course and how do you say, this is what I'm going to continue to do in an extraordinarily volatile, disrupted vertical? Never putting the blinders on being constantly aware of everything that's going on. You know, there's a lot of people that just stay the course. Let me do my job. Da, 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 da. No, I let me mean, keep my head down. Let me keep my head down. I'm not that person. I'm not going to be that person. If they don't like it, then I don't know, like find, find somebody better that to, right. to do all these jobs. But I, I'm going to put my best foot forward. I'm going to constantly speak my truth. I'm going to stand my ground when th- I think things are right or wrong or or just my opinion on how things look if you know if that vase needs to be centered yeah. a little bit more it, stupid things you know I, i'm going to do Good. that Good. does that always reflect uh I, I know that i am probably looked over for a lot of um c sweet jobs because of my personality at times um but then again i'm also comfortable in not getting that job because it probably wasn't for me anyway. Yeah. If they if they need a yes man, I'm not I'm not your girl anyway. It's not a personality fit. And I'm okay with that. Uh, What excites me is people like yourselves recognizing me. No, you don't understand. Like I will drive home with a smile on my face (laughs) knowing that you guys recognize me. Oh my word. Um learn from as well. Not just recognize, I learned from. Back at you. But that's what we all should do. And and when Ann and I sat and thought, okay, you know, and I'm a big action person, clearly. I think we can talk about things and I think we can do something about it. And and this is this is our effort solely to help women in business, especially younger women in business. And if it cuts down on the learning curve at all, because I think, you know, Holly, it's it's you know, are we fearless? I think some days I'm fearless and some days I fear less fear better be part of everyone's DNA because it's our fight or flight reminder what are we doing here are we going to stay and fight right are we going to we're going to head for the exits 
And when I look out at at everything, and I'm very faith based, right? I I put a lot of things right as, as the passenger and the Lord's driving the bus, and it's I think everything everything does and doesn't happen for a reason. You got that right, one hundred percent every and, day of the and, week, and that's yeah. what I call faith, right? Like, nope, somebody bigger than me has it, right? And I'm trying to do the right things. I try to help everyone. But woof, man, when the hot take comes out, it's like, you better duck because it's coming. And I, I, you know, can I change that? I've modified it. Ann's helped me a lot with that, you know, in terms of like who you say what to, right? You know, but it still burns as brightly as and hotly as it ever has. Sure. You know, and I think this podcast has helped. Ann has helped. It's just that our producers are good. All the people that helped us put this together, you know, gave me faith to be able to say there is things that we can contribute. And that's resilience Mm -hmm. to say we have a lot to contribute and no one does more than you do. Well, yeah, but, but okay. But I can turn that around. Like, do you guys ever unplug? Like, yes, you, of course you unplug, but do you really unplug? If somebody (laughs) in your company needs something, you're going to answer them at eight o'clock at eight o'clock at night. So, so while we all are busy, like it is, there is a personal maturity that happens over years and, and, um, I I guess growth within your workspace. Right. But there's also, you know, your time that you need to take a step back and say, Ooh, let me think on this one. Let me lay my head on a pillow and give the 24 hour rule, you know, which is the best, by the way, I never knew about the 24 hour rule until my kids started playing sports. And I was like, that is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I was like, I don't even remember what coach that was. I was like, right. sleep on it for 24 don't hours. Don't quite like, fire that ooh, missile yet. Ooh. Just wait a little bit. I'm like, ooh. That's a business vitamin. And I forgot I was remiss in introducing us that way, See, Holly. so we were out of sorts. I know, like, so, I know. You know. Um, the only requirement, and I, you know this <laughs> through our personal conversations, is to think about one, two, three, five uh, <laughs> business vitamins that our uh, listeners can use the day they hear them or, you know, some, some kind of value we hope to, uh, return on listening, a, a value, hour uh, for them. But I love that. And That's I think a great vitamin, the older we get, the, uh, more we see the benefit of that. If we all could do that when we were 22 years old, you know, coming to the workplace. Amen. And, um, so my other business vitamin, I, and, and I don't know if this qualifies, but I, I briefly said to this, like I, I truly, truly believe that everyone should travel by themselves one time. So I love that idea. I'm terribly intrigued. I'm totally not brave enough to do that. I want to be. I want to be. <laughs> so I'm going to put it out there that I would I would love to. Like, I love, I'll, I'll go out to lunch or dinner with myself. That's like some Some women will not do that. They will not do that. Yeah, no, don't be afraid and of that. And I, you know. Oh my God, some of the best times in my life. I went, <laughs> so tell myself. me about the travel by yourself. I'm so, intrigued. So the first time I did it, I actually went to Europe. And now technically no, I you was. you did not. I was with RJ on a listener trip. So there were listeners there, but I literally was by myself the entire time. So the greatest thing, yes, I had a backup in case I needed to yeah. hang out with somebody. Yeah. But here I am in Germany and France and Switzerland and Netherlands. And, you know, we're going to and from those countries yourself. Yeah. So like there was a group of us, obviously, that were traveling together, but I was by myself. Yeah. So when we'd get off uh, the boat, we were actually on one of those river cruises, by the way. Oh, that's so cool. By the way, please do it. Please do a river cruise. So cool. Um, So when we would get off the boat, the, the tour guides, I just became friends with them and they were from, you know hungry or, you know, this place, that place. And they would say, I don't know if you're going to like the Cuckoo Clock Museum, go explore the town. So I'd get on a bicycle and I'd ride through Were you like in a cafe? Oh, a vineyard. Uh, I mean- How sophisticated. My my (laughs) Rudensheim coffee. (laughs) Ah! Rudensheim coffee. Go Google that tomorrow. Oh my word. I'm telling you. Rudensheim is a place in Germany I will go back to at some point in my life. So then, but then I started going like, like, it was nothing. I, you know, here I am kidless on a weekend and I'm like, do, 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 <laughs> Like, what am I going to do? Yeah, I can go hang out with my girlfriends at happy hour or do this, you know, or the kids have sports. But then like, I would book a flight and I'm like, let's go to Florida. You know? I love that. Now I would See, do, I that. do that. I did a lot single. I did, I did do did you? a lot of that single. Yeah. Cause I didn't, I didn't meet my husband I think what, I was 36. What so. um, prevents me from doing, well, I mean, I don't, 
I don't have to do it now because I would either take my girlfriends or my husband, but it would be the safety security of that. Like I, the thought that I'm going to travel overseas myself and what if I get appendicitis, then who on earth is going to guide me, help me, whatever. So I took my daughter. You a very interesting thing about <laughs> Dieter Gallagher. We're, yeah, we're I know. Gonna, so this so is what do you do for so, that? So here's the thing. Because appendicitis by, may happen. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So I will tell you this. I get off a flight <laughs> um, to Curacao, right, which is down by Venezuela. You okay. Know, like the ABCs, oh, right? Like there's oh, Aruba, yeah. Bonaire, Curacao. Curacao is my favorite place on the planet. Like, oh. I will go back there again. Okay. So, but Wait, I so had, you're flying there yourself with Mia I had my two-year-old daughter now oh. my ex-husband and my son were coming down a couple days later but I was like I'll do it whatever like we could oh go early word. he couldn't but I was like yeah whatever it's a couple days I'll be fine so I get off the flight and it was in February March I can't remember but um it's during carnival Okay, and if you know anything about South American or the Spanish culture, Carnival is literally the biggest of festivities. In the streets before, and everything? Oh, like headdresses and like... It's like Coachella only. Like it's just culturally the most yeah. amazing thing on your eyes. Like you don't, you don't understand the colors and, the, and the, the flavor and the music and the sounds. However, I'm with a two-year-old daughter. It's 10 o'clock <laughs> at night and I'm in a foreign country oh. that I also didn't do my research on, but they do not speak Spanish. They speak their own language and oh, Dutch. Shoot. And I knew it was a Dutch country, but I don't, who knows Dutch? I don't know Dutch, right? So I get off the flight and I'm like, taxi? No, they, there's not a translated word for that. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm running around the airport. Anyway, I find- Where's Rosetta Stone when you need it? <laughs> right, and this is before all that. So, so yeah. right? So oh, like, oh now my okay, God. Yeah. You know that TV show Fear Factor? That would be it for me. So yeah. I don't even think I had an iPhone. <laughs> I think right. I had a flip phone at this point, right? Like barely an iPhone, right? So I figured it out. Oh. And, and that that there is what set me on this whole travel by yourself. You can do it. Like you figure it out. Stretches your comfort zone. Well, I think so that your would, appendicitis I think, thing, yeah, yeah. you'll figure it out. It's not going to happen. But I mean, it could, but uh, just don't Well, you know water. what? So a true confession on one of my weaknesses. So I do pride myself on being self-aware. I know what my weaknesses are. <laughs> <laughs> that, that requires a lot of bravery. I, I could- But um, you are brave. No, not in that aspect. Like I, that would be totally isn't this pushing myself because she's so brave. Yeah. No, that would be pushing myself. She's way, a trailblazer, way I out mean, of my. Huh. Uh, but do you know? Zone. But do you know you're not brave until you're not brave? Like you, you know what I mean? Like you don't it, like just take an easy trip. I'm not even saying like you have to do this, but I guess what I'm saying is like, like I would want to that, that you don't even know you're fearing until after you fear. Right. Well, go, How did I accomplish and that? And I said to people, they wow. say, oh, you're so brave. I said, well, am I brave or am I acting brave? You just need people to see bravery. Yeah. Whether I'm acting so or whether I actually feel it. brave. You just yeah. got to do it. Yeah. So fun fact, today we're recording. It's National Walking Day. Did you ladies know that? Oh, no. And it's I have National a Walking Day. I do. I know you do a lot of walking. I do. I do and do it with my two travel girlfriends because we all live in the same neighborhood and they're, they're amazing uh, dedication. Um, Holly, do you walk at all on any, you know, is that, is that a COVID on and thing off for you? On and off fields and okay. <laughs> <laughs> mailbox. Oh, uh, that, okay. No, that, I need to start walking. I, it's, I, I used to love walking. I don't do it anymore. So my travel girlfriends, who are my walking friends, who, are, who were all in the neighborhood, our kids, you know, grew up together and are all married and, and whatnot now. Uh, we go on a trip every year. And what they love to do, uh, they love to find the highest bridge. And we incorporate that into our walking. Well, so when we went to Napa, and of course we stayed in San Francisco, and they they want to walk on the Golden Gate. Well, I'm like, holy crap, like that, that's like pretty high. Yeah, that's real high. That's like in the <laughs> It's high. really windy there. <laughs> yeah. And they were gung-ho. Honest to goodness, I had a full-on panic attack. Because you can't just change your mind. No. When you're and you would blow away in a stiff oh, wind. Well, I don't know about that, but you you're one of those over clip things. The you know, line clips. Yes. We're we're going over and it's over a mile, you know, to, to get across. I'm like, huh. Oh. But it was kind of that I was so uh anxious and trepidatious that in the end it was really good. You know what that sounds like? Because you weird. conquered it. it. Yes, totally conquered Huge it. Huge fear. And, and you my siblings it. were saying, I can't believe you did that. You know, I never would have done that in a million years. So I um 
And then we've done other bridges since. I said, this is like, I don't really want it to be a thing. <laughs> right, 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 right. This is your thing, girls. I, I know. Will, I'll size it up. I'm not time. going to skydive. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm not going to bungee jump. But doing something where it pushes you. And I think that's good for the brain. I oh, think that's good yeah. for us, you know, as, as women. And COVID maybe opened up opportunities to do that. But the travel alone, I know it's a thing. There's several blog bloggers that focus on that. So healthy for your mindset. The like, is, I don't know. Would you do it? You already do it. Well, we're going to have to have a cliffhanger because <laughs> we're under a minute now. Oh, it's oh half gosh, a minute oh, left. Shoot. And we have to wrap up with Holly because our podcasts are 30 minutes <laughs> of rollicking good time. But we're in charge. So which yeah, this, 35, this whatever. Yeah. 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 Yep. But, so that's a whole, we, we need to do. So here, Holly Love, we're bringing you back. I want to do a whole podcast on solo travel for women. Yeah. And I know, you know, I want you to walk me through the safety and security of that. Because I immediately go to to weirdness. Like, okay, uh, you know, yes. whether it's airport, whether it's driving yourself, you know, what if you're in the the middle, you know, of the country and there's no gas stations around or anything? I mean, how do you deal with that? Or do you just not, or camping, you know, there's a whole big thing. Of okay, I'm not a camper. Appalachian. Let's this route. No, 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 no. When I said travel. She's a glamper. Uh, I'm barely that. Well, there's. Like, I'm more of a, like, put me in a nice hotel. There's <laughs> women like who, who, like, hike the Appalachian Trail themselves. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I, mm, I would do it, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, an, I'm not the outdoorsy type. So like, you in traveled sense. to... In that sense. To, you know? Throughout the U.S. and to uh, other countries yourself. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I immerse myself in culture, though. No, I, I love that, that. I think that's, I love that. that's, like, the best And education. you have found everybody, you know, to uh, be receptive of that and helpful to you. And I walked 10 miles in Koblenz. Oh, we're so over time. I walked 10 miles in Koblenz, Ger- Germany, by myself to find a Harley Davidson dealership. Long story. <laughs> but anyway, and I found myself... That's so long. Yeah, and right, <laughs> and I found myself in this crazy neighborhood I probably shouldn't <gasps> have been in. But I mean, it was fine. I mean, it was middle of the day, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to find myself. Everything's in a bad better in the light of day. Yeah, yeah. It's, and yeah. I just, it's just less scary to it. There's just I just googled find find an Uber, and then I went up to a guy and I said, "Hey, can you help me get an Uber or a taxi?" And he was plentiful. Yeah, ha- you know, happy Helpful. to help. Good. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, like, it's just yeah, I walked myself into a bad situation, but I also walked myself out of that situation. So give me, which to is my tee story this up uh, and pique everyone's interest, give me a bite. It's literally the story of my life. Walk yourself into a bad station, then walk yourself out, Holly. <laughs> give us a business vitamin on solo travel. What's one thing we should know or prepare for if we're going to do that? Don't be a tourist. Ooh, that's if, good. If, if the store looks interesting, go in it. Good. You know, if the if the restaurant looks good, go in it. I'm not saying order the weird thing on the menu you've yeah. never heard of, but you know what I mean. Like just like literally Immerse go get yourself. a go get a beer at the local yeah. bar. You know, like find find the culture. find where the locals are. Yeah, but yeah. find but find the find the history of of that particular place you're in because that's where you're going to learn and that's where you're going to learn about the people and who knows you might find your new destination. You know, a place that you feel at home. Well, we're going to bring Holly back on National Travel Alone, nah. alone Day. <laughs> Maybe we'll just make that National yeah, Travel Solo say, Day. If it doesn't exist, we we, we shall make it so. <laughs> Holly Love, it's so good to see you. It always is, is a pleasure being here, and I'm honored. The I'm energy so honored. is high gear. Uh, we love what you've shared, the stories, and I'm inspired. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some research tonight. Okay. So happy National Walking Day, everybody, and uh, cheers. I'm going for a walk today. I'm doing it. (laughs) Cheers to getting our steps in. And we'll see Holly soon. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. It's our desire that these stories will bring energy, ideas, and fresh thinking that you can use today. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram. And have a high-gear day.